Hi and welcome to Auto Animals. Today we're going to be looking at the Land Rover Freelander 2. Having looked through some of the adverts Land Rover have been putting out for the Freelander 2, it's pretty obvious what impression they want to give. They're trying to appeal to young, energetic and outdoorsy people, although I'm pretty sure the majority of buyers are 40-something parents who have just got rid of the kids and want to try and feel young again. They want to show a refined, modern and plush vehicle that can also make us feel more adventurous at the weekend. Don't believe me, here we have the obligatory handsome man and pretty lady at the end of one of the adverts. These are the people Land Rover think we want to be. The Freelander 2 is the baby of the range really, and considering it's an entry level model for Land Rover, it's still a pretty well specced and high class car. Not forgetting the Discovery Sport, which has replaced the Freelander 2 and made the brand even more upmarket. So, who's the target audience for this car? Well, it could be anybody really, but primarily Land Rover were aiming for the architect who needs to get to site to see how things are going. He's got a, a muddy trail to get up. People who want that extra load carrying ability, but don't want something quite as big as a Discovery or a Land Cruiser. It's also for people who want to tow uh, horse boxes, trailers, caravans, that kind of thing. Um, even the school run mum who, after drop dropping the kids off at school, needs to feed the pony. In regards to the styling of the Freelander 2, it's very much gone in a different direction to the original Freelander. Everything's a lot more boxy and squared off, but it's still got curves in just the right places to soften it up a little bit. And despite the styling cue changes, it hasn't really lost much of its practicality. There's still little things like the plastic trim on the sill for the dogs getting in and out so they don't scratch the paintwork. And something else we did notice is, like many soft roaders these days, the exhaust actually hangs sideways. Now, that could be a little bit restrictive when going off-road due to how low it sits, but for most people, probably wouldn't be an issue. When you look at the Freelander 2 as a whole, it's a lot more subtle with the styling. It doesn't demand quite as much attention when you look at it, and it could blend into a car park quite easily. But we haven't lost this one yet, so let's take it for a drive. So to drive the Freelander, it uh, actually feels pretty car-like, to be honest, especially for a 4x4. Yes, it, it leans a little bit around the corners, but it, it will do. Uh, the ride is smooth. Um, I feel reasonably low to the ground for a 4x4. Um, there's a bit of road noise, but nothing I'd ride home about. Something that's very evident as soon as you get into here is it certainly has a more upmarket feel, uh, much like the Range Rovers and Discoveries uh, in, also in the range. Um, everything's nice to touch, you've got nice leathers, all the plastics, are, yeah okay, it's plastic, but they're nicer plastics. Um, it feels like a really nice upmarket place to be. Interestingly, although this does feel quite car-like to drive, it does tend to lure you into a false sense of security. Uh, if you push it round roundabouts, uh, you, you give it a, a little bit of beam, um, it will still, you'll, you'll feel the rear end start to, to lose grip a bit, so it, it reminds you that this is uh, a larger vehicle than your average hatchback. So, for example, if I go around this roundabout here, um, we're only doing about oh, 15 to 20, and if I turn tightly and try to accelerate out, I can feel the rear tyres scrubbing. Um, it certainly does remind you that there's a bit more weight to this, uh, and it does need to be uh, shown a bit of respect. Now, like most cars in this class, you know, uh, small 4x4s, there is a healthy amount of boot space on this. Uh, it's never going to be quite as long as perhaps an estate car, but it certainly has the height um, and the, the capacity that is uh, always going to be that bit more useful than a typical hatchback. There's, there's nothing in the way. The boot opening is quite big. What I really do like about the Freelander um, is with that more upmarket feel, uh, the seats are incredibly comfortable. I, I am really comfortable here. I don't really want to get out at any point. Um, and also gives an incredibly good driving position. I, I feel like I could be here for quite a while. Something else I like about the Freelander, and it's actually something I, I quite respect uh, Land Rover for doing, is that this car is probably one of the least flashy cars in its class. Um, it's a very honest car. It does what it needs to do without making a fuss when you compare it uh, to its rivals, such as the RAV4 and the CRV, which feel like pieces have been added uh, just to make it look nicer when really they add nothing at all. This is a very plain and simple, honest car. 
Now, despite being a, a larger uh, vehicle, if, if you like, a very large, heavy hatchback, so a small 4x4, four four, um, it's really sprightly. Um, I mean, if I knock this into um, command shift, uh, so I can manually select gears and I go down a gear, put my foot down and straight away you can hear the engine pick up and already bang 70. So it will not hang around. Um, okay it's, uh, it's not hot hatch performance but uh, certainly for overtaking a dual carriageway it gives me complete confidence. So I've been driving the Freelander for a few hours now and uh, something that I've noticed is uh, despite that I'm still not really able to get used to how clustered the dashboard is. Finding buttons without staring at it for a moment is, is very difficult. A lot of cars ideally the buttons are positioned so that you can you can feel for them. You don't have to look at the, the dashboard but with this I, I just can't get used to it. It all feels very very cluttered. Uh, the gear shifter, the handbrake, the terrain response all seems to be overlapping each other. That that's something that does put me off and they could have done with rearranging that slightly possibly. Something I have noticed with this car is that uh, even though, okay, yes, there's, there's plastics, and they are good plastics, uh, everything here feels fairly, fairly tough and it will wear well. It's, it's rough and ready uh, compared to some of the competition which feel a little bit soft, um, like they're not really going to last very long. This feels like it's, it's, it's ready for action, it's ready for a hard day's work. Um, everything's wiped clean, smooth plastic, no, nothing, nothing grooved for dirt to get stuck in. As a side note, um, this car is currently averaging 29 to the gallon, which I think, all things considered, is actually pretty reasonable. Okay, okay, I think perhaps the competition is probably nudging closer to 40 miles per gallon, uh, but even at, at 29, I think that's, that's pretty good going for a car of this size and weight. So, what do we think of the Freelander 2? Well, it feels like it may be a bit easy to forget in this world of, let's face it, a lot of competition uh, in the small 4x4 category and soft rovers. But being a Land Rover with the heritage that Land Rover has, I do believe that it will be around for some time to come. Now, if you are one of the small percentage, perhaps, that does need to genuinely use the car off-road on a regular basis, it's pretty unbeatable. We do highly recommend it. I guess the only real competition in that respect is the Nissan X-Trail and probably the Subaru Forester, actually. Having spent some time with the Freelander 2, it really does give me the impression that it's, it's been built properly for the job. It seems like the right tool for the job. With all the competition around, this is the one that really seems to tick all the boxes for the majority of people. It subtly gets on with the job while other 4x4s are singing and shouting about all the fancy things they can do. All in all, the Freelander sticks to its roots. It offers a more practical hatchback, a small 4x4, but at the same time retains a degree of comfort and luxury. Overall, I do recommend the Freelander, so I, I do really like it, but what I would say is take a good look at the competition and have a good long hard look at what you really need from the car. So that was our review of the Land Rover Freelander 2. We'd love to know what you think. If you've got an opinion, don't forget to put it in the comments box below. Uh, if you'd like to see more like this, don't forget to subscribe uh, and we will see you soon towing horse boxes, trailers, um, the mum who has to go and feed the <laughs> towing trailers, um, the <laughs> school run mum who needs to... <laughs> school needs to go in. <laughs> Cyclists. Right, are you going to count how many? All right, and see how many abreast they're cycling. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I see at least five yellow jerseys, so that's five Bradley Wiggins one of these. <laughs> and they're cycling at least three abreast. Um, <laughs> I mean, my God. Next monkey. It's the Spandex Brigade. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. You're saying my gears uh, are slightly uh, higher ratio than my yours. thousand pounds street race mm. bike. And my spandex is just that little bit tighter around my balls. That makes me go quicker. Spandex monkey, spandex monkeys, when will it stop? Nobody knows. One, two, three, four, five spandex monkeys, yellow jackets. Two abreast. Sweaty balls. Bikes.